joke, so I'm hoping that, that the slides will just cooperate with me. So the goals for tonight, we're just gonna we're gonna work on uh, understanding how our health works, what we can do to be healthier. Uh, we want we want to understand how vitamin D can help us stay healthy. Is that clear enough? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then we're gonna learn a couple other strategies that we can do to uh, help us stay healthy. And vitamin D is important, but like it says here, vitamin D is not is not the whole answer. It's not the whole enchilada. So we're gonna try to put that together with what else we need to do. Because vitamin D is important, but there's there's more to it than that. And so um, I'm going to read you just a little quote. Um, this, is, this is coming from a book called Reclaiming Our Health. It's by John Robbins. Uh, he is the heir to the Baskin Robbins throne. Uh, if you've ever heard of Baskin Robbins, it's a huge ice cream chain. Well, John Robbins had different ideas than just selling ice cream. He was more interested in keeping people healthy than just than they're selling ice cream. So this is his story. Uh, Once upon a time, there was a large, rich country where people kept falling over a steep cliff. They'd fall to the bottom and become injured sometimes quite seriously, and many of them died. The nation's medical establishment responded to the situation by positioning at the base of the cliff the most sophisticated and expensive ambulance fleet ever developed, which would immediately rush those who had fallen to modern hospitals that were equipped with the latest technology wizardry. No expense was too great, they said, when people's health was at stake. Now it happened that it occurred to certain people that there was another possibility would be to erect a fence at the top of the cliff where they voiced the idea, however, they, they found themselves ignored. The ambulance drivers were not particularly keen on the idea of preventing people from falling, nor were the people who manufactured ambulances, nor were those who made their living at the hospital. The medical authorities explained patiently that the problem was far more complex than people realized, and that while building a fence might seem like an interesting idea, it was actually far from practical. The health was far too important to be left in the hands of people that were not experts. Leave it to us, they said, for with enough money, we will soon be able to genetically engineer people who do not fall or bru become bruised when they fall off of the cliff. <laughs> so no fences were built. As time passed, this nation found itself spending an ever-increasing amount of its financial resources on hospitals and high-tech medical equipment. The fact it came to spend far more on this service than any other country in any other place in the world and at any other time in the history of the world. Money that could have gone to community service, decent housing, education, and good food was not available for people because it was being spent on ambulances and hospitals as the cost of treating people kept rising, growing numbers of people could not afford medical care. And so if we look at this example and we, we look at where we're at today in our in our medical care system, in our health society, we almost it almost is kind of eerie compared to what this story is that he's telling us. And so tonight we're not going to be worrying about how do we repair you after you've fallen off the cliff. We're going to be learning about what can we do to prevent you from reaching that bottom of the cliff. And in this example here, we can see the little guy falling off the cliff. And you can say this, as, you, as you're falling down the side of the hill, you can say, I feel great all the way down. By the time you feel the pain, it might be too late. And so the same thing applies with some of these strategies that we're going to talk about. Same thing with vitamin D. We may find that your levels are low. By the time you actually find out that you're too low, you may have developed already a, a problem. And so we want to talk about how do we prevent the problem? What's the next step? And so uh, the solution is obviously it's much easier to prevent a problem than to try to fix a problem. Much easier to erect the fence to stop yourself from falling off the cliff than to try to repair the damage after you've already fallen. And so what's our wall of defense? That's our immune system. Our immune system prevents us from getting sick, prevents us from getting cancer. The immune system is the key. We need our immune system to be strong. And so it takes personal responsibility for us to build a strong immune system. We aren't just automatically given a perfect immune system. We have to do some things to be healthy in today's society. So it actually takes some work. Now here's a question. Uh, why do we get sick? So we look at a classroom full of children, lots of classrooms around, and how come only some of the kids are sick, even though they're all breathing the same air, they're all uh, being exposed to the same germs, how come only some of the kids are getting sick? And it's more than just the germs. It's not bad luck. Uh, if the germs cause disease, what would happen to our doctors? That was a, that was a quote by one of, the, one of our mentors. And so you think about 
all these people that are sick going into the doctor, if there was just the germs that was causing the problem, why aren't the doctors the, the, the sickest people out there? So what controls our health? I, I gave you guys a little diagram here. Um, this one we're going to be referring to a few times, so I left that separate. And when you look at this diagram, it's kind of confusing, but in the middle, you'll see a circle, and it says cerebellum. And what the cerebellum is, is it's the part of the brain that runs all the automatic processes. So if we were to look at a computer, it would be like the central processing unit. It's the mainframe. It's the part that runs everything. We don't have to think about this stuff. It, ha it happens automatically. That's, how, that's what keeps us healthy. And so as we started looking at people, we realized that the cerebellum runs well, but it doesn't run quite the same in everybody. So the question is, what helps the cerebellum run well in some people, but doesn't control things the same way in, in other people? And what we found out is that throughout the body, there's in the, all the joints of the body, there's little receptors called a mechanoreceptor or a proprioceptor. And what these little receptors do is they feed information to our brain to tell our brain what's going on in our environment. And so as we're moving, as we're living our daily life, we're sending information up to the brain to help the brain work. If we stop moving, unfortunately you're sitting right now, as you stop moving, you might even start to notice you start to feel tired because the <laughs> lack of movement is not sending information to our brain, and so our brain starts to shut down. And so we'll, we'll do something about that in just a second here. Um, but exercise, like it says here, is, food for, is like food for the brain. And so if we want to get our brain working better, it takes exercise. And if you think about people out running or jogging on a treadmill, you don't see people falling asleep and falling off the treadmill, because as you're moving, you're stimulating the brain activity. Um, we'll talk about some of the other things that are important for, for improved health through the cerebellum and what, what are things that can interfere with that.